Thank you, Ayotemi, for passing on the baton as our guest is an entertainer of international repute, Bon Charles Chukwemeka Uputa, also spelt, also known as Charlie Boy, known as CB, his royal punkness and area father. He is a Nigerian singer, songwriter, television presenter, publisher, and producer, one of Nigeria's most controversial entertainers. He's best known for his alternative lifestyle, political views, and media productions, most notable for the Charlie Boy Show. I'm sure a lot of you are not born there. He has served as president of the Performing Music Association of Nigeria, P-Man, and in 2011 was an Idol Series judge, the second son of former Supreme Court Justice Chuku Difu Oputa Oguta, native Oputa, was born into a Catholic household and is the cousin of Swedish musician Dr. Alban. Towards the late 80s, with the help of stylist and fellow singer-songwriter Tina Onwudiwe, May I so rest in perfect peace? Created a new punk persona consisting of leather jackets and boots, power bikes, mohawks, and a new direction in music combining Afro pop, African pop, and Afro beat. A pioneer in Nigeria's short lived punk movement, his own end unofficial title is Royal Punkness, and renamed his Lagos residence the Punk Palace. Some of his popular television series, series are The Charlie Boy Show, a weekly sketch variety show with political undertones and featured music, comedy, and celebrity appearance key segments included this is not the news and uh, mama and papa not in spoil i'm sure a lot of you remember that mm -hmm. and he has also provided comical answers to views and candid cam uh, on candid camera among the cast were charlie boy's wife diane oputa actress stella damascus messi oyebo singing duo tunde and wumi obe and patrick doyle popularly called the area father and one of the most controversial artists like i said earlier of our time ladies and gentlemen boys and girls welcome the extraordinaire husband father grandfather social activist humanitarian charlie boy <laughs> Welcome, sir. Hello, hello. <laughs> How's it going, sir? Such a full-on introduction. Mm. Just yes. to prepare the, the guests that were not playing games. But I would games. have done it differently. Yeah? Mm. What would you Ladies and gentlemen. All righty, then. Bye. Get Let's it. do that. Let's do that. Mm -hmm. Meet Charlie Boy, mm -hmm. the area father. Yes. Mm -hmm. The king of boys. Yes. The king of boys. Yes. You <laughs> Udu Dubari ba one yeah. of Africa, <laughs> a spiritual warrior, mm. yeah, and the president of all frustrated Nigerians. Nigerians. Wait, let him be that too. Once again, president of all frustrated Nigerians, yeah. and yes, um, God of men. So. Before we even delve into your life, um, I know you were going to be a priest <laughs> before you decided to follow your true calling. So how, how did that change for you? And um, does that decision make you feel any regret? Do you wish you still followed no. the path which was an issue for you? I've always been known to do it my way. Mm. Yeah. Uh -huh. And uh, because I, I grew up in a family that, um, my parents terrorized me with religion. Yeah. It was always Bible studies, catechism, you know, born into a Catholic kind mm. of family. I was an altar boy from, uh, I think, uh, 14 till about 17, mm. till I went to steal the, the uh, Reverend Father's uh, communion and drank the wine. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Exclusive. Yeah. Have you said that anywhere before? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> okay, Charlie Boy stole the Reverend Father's wine. In case the Reverend Father has two hundred or two kids. <laughs> and uh, before I turned eighteen or thereabout, you know, I was thinking about a seminary, and I stayed in the seminary. I think I was there for about seven months and decided, oh no, that's not what I really want to do. Mm. You know. But I knew where all of that was coming from, right. uh, from my beginning, my background, of you know. And then, of course, I did want to be a magician. Okay. Mm. Uh, among all things, I wanted to do magic. But I understood that magic was an illusion. It wasn't mm. about no abracadabra. Mm. It wasn't about no black uh, magic. magic. Mm. You know, it was just illusion, illusion. tricks, mm. you know. So I... Uh, yeah, that didn't fly, the priesthood. But guess what? You know, like I said in my post, I think a couple of weeks ago, I, I keep having this fantasy of wanting to 
go to a monastery, mm -hmm. become a monk, because I've been there, I've done that, I've seen so many. I don't see 99 now, so we can remain. Mm -hmm. You understand? <laughs> so it's like, and I, I've lived, as far as I'm concerned, I've lived a life that has made me happy. I did everything my own way. way. According and, to your uh, terms. Yeah. And I, I, that's what I want to actually touch on, because when I, especially because I'm a lot younger and you're like mm -hmm. someone we've looked up to and we study, it's very rare to kind of see the old age Nigerians who are alternative, is what we call them now. So okay. they're the ones that don't fit into the normal stereotypical, mm -hmm. which are mostly new age, but you are not a, a baby. So, how is, it, how is it that? Hey, what are you trying to say? <laughs> how is it that you were able to stand out so much in such a period? With the trend. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Because you're not even mentioning that your family was even now religious. It's not as if no, you had the luxury of. Um, uh, you know, expressing yourself fully when you were at home. And I'm sure you didn't in the society either because we were a lot more, um, you know, backward then than we're still even backward now. Mm -hmm. So there must have no, been a lot I'm of not that time. No. <laughs> no, 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 no. So how did you manage to, fo to always go against, like, you must have no, experienced no. resistance yeah. all of the course. time. Oh. How did you manage to keep yourself going. and keep going with all of that? Because I come from a different place. Okay, I come from a place of love. I come from a place of want. Mm. My parents always said to me, even when, I, when we were little, living in uh, Potaka, River State, oh, you know, um, things like, you know, you're, you know, you're different. Do you mm. know who you are? Do you know who you are? I'm now long, what's, what's up with this question? Mm. Of course, my name is Nacha, Charles Oputa. I live at number 11, <laughs> Burukiri, Ahofia, oh. Potakot. So yeah. bloody what? And they say, no, you're an Oputa. As an Oputa, you have to behave like this. You have to walk like this. You have to talk like this. Mm. It was all about morals and values mm. that finally started to form an independent-minded human being. Mm. You understand? So, from early enough, it was like, <clears throat> yeah, I got into a lot of trouble, mm. you know, because my parents always taught us to be adventurous, ask, ask questions. Mm. Okay, whatever you don't understand, interrogate. Mm. And I did interrogate my father like, hey, mm. so did the man begin the facts. So oh, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, the thing that they taught because, you now became the trouble, right? The bongo, you see. Of course. Mm. Okay, so. And uh, I'll share this much with you. You know, when you have a famous father mm -hmm. and you have a child that stands out, it starts to look like competition sometimes. Mm -hmm. so. Because I didn't want to live under anybody's shadow. I wanted to do my own thing because it was everywhere when it was like, uh, mm -hmm. that's the son yeah. of, you know. So already they're trying like to put that. you in a box already. Pre precisely. And I didn't really set out to be an artist, mm. because I remember one day I just came back after my youth call that was in a worry, and they asked, uh, my father called me up this morning and said, here is a letter, go to Potakut, give somebody this letter, Mr. So, 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 and start work. I said, you and who? Hmm. Well, <laughs> I didn't tell anybody I was going to work for anybody, mm. you know, but because this guy, that's my father, has been like overbearing, uh, being cantankerous. You know, children would always look at their parents right. like, you're old fashioned now, you don't know what's up now. You know, you're always bothering me now. You understand? Mm -hmm. So when he now asked me what I really wanted to do, I said I wanted to be a musician. Oh boy, how scatter. <laughs> and he felt so disappointed. He felt that, of course then, Everybody had the stereotype idea what entertainers are like. Yeah. No good, just because you failed in everything, that's why you're mm. taking that up. So I came at a time when people just didn't understand what show business was all about. Right. Well, you, okay, you so, are, but, um, sorry, yeah. let me just come in here. Now, for someone who's been through all of that, someone mm -hmm. who's experienced that, somebody who lived life on their own terms and their own decisions. Now, your daughter 
came out and she opened up about her sexuality to you. At first you were against it and then recently or the blogs or the posts we saw made it look like I don't know where you were coming from. Maybe you were taken out of context, which I stand to be corrected on this table right now. But um, at first it looked like, no, I'm not taking that. I'm not having it. You can't be that in my house. And that was what it was, it was looking like. Then we saw a post recently for parents only which you also addressed when your daughter put out a post. Now, how would you correlate that? You going through all of that, you being different and being taken, being seen as the outcast and still surviving it and still being the successful man you are today. Now, how do you think it made your daughter feel? And would you like to correct some things that are out there in the media about your relationship with your daughter? Because she said you guys haven't spoken in five years. No, you know, I've been on that trip. Uh, my daughter was upset with me that I didn't allow her to tell her own story. Mm. Because I told my own story. Right. Yeah? Nobody, she nobody. That. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And, uh, and one thing parents must not do, you know, because now you're born the picking. Don't keep looking at him or her like, like a child. Like a child. Mm. Listen, kids know more than not the parents these days though. Mm. Because in my own time, there were no social media and all those kind of stuff. Mm. So it was a one-on-one -on -one yeah. bonding. And the way I've raised my children is for them to, to with openness, for them to keep talking to me. They are my, really, they are my friends. Mm. I don't tell them what to do. I advise them, I guide them. Mm. The ultimate decision is in their hands. And I brought them all to be independent, Just like not to rely on anybody but themselves. Uh -huh. So whatever they turn out to be in their life, I understand, I support, as long as it's not, you know, in anybody's face or way or it's not negative, mm -hmm. you understand? Because for me as a parent, their happiness and their mental well-being mm. is my prerogative mm. and that's why they're no. my children but so what, yeah. what, what, what are you so anyways because I understand the dynamics I did apologize okay. I wrote Apart an apology media, apology do, do you reach out so of course of course we even after that day two days after that you know we yeah. had we had our Zoom time, like mm. we normally do twice a month. All my children, my grandchildren, mm. everybody comes together. We have a Zoom time, and then we'll talk. Whatever is bothering anybody, mm. we, we're a talking kind of people, mm. you know. So that is why I'm kind of attached to my children. Because I, want, I, want, I want to ask, though, when the story first came out, especially because of your, mm -hmm. for parents only, it was kind of like a shock to a lot of people that you would even be the type of father that would have not been on board with it from beginning. And I think because of your perspective, because of your perception that we have that, you know, area father is just completely alternative, he would, you know, he and would I'm be okay. even a homosexual. Exactly. Say it now. I'm warming up, sir. Okay. I'm warming up. <laughs> um, you know, that you're so alternative with everything that you do, yeah. your dressing, your, your friends that you keep, your style of music, your, mm -hmm. your thoughts on, on anything, really. So when somebody now comes out to say that they are all alternative because I'll, I'll use the word alternative in the in the what's not normal or considered uh, popular in terms of the sexuality you'll be down for that because you represent you kind of embody that already without even, yes. you even knowing it those so were how, how all, did that... all the questions you know that was going on in my head the first mm. day I had this yeah mm. my daughter called me up thank God I was laying on the bed it was in the night from America and say daddy I got something to say to you I said, yeah, go ahead. And I was wondering why she was taking permission. Mm. Because she tells she me tells everything. everything. So he said, promise me you're not going to be upset with me. I said, no. Ain't nothing you're going to do to me. Because that one, Nachali girl, <laughs> yeah. that's my last baby. <laughs> yeah. And I love her so much. Yeah. But I was saying in my mind, oh, ah, make it no be like, say, this girl don't pregnant. Oh. She wants to tell me something really bad. Mm -hmm. So then she reluctantly put it out. And I was like, okay, Charlie boy.
calm down. Just calm down. Because anything you do now will affect your relationship with your girl. You don't want to push her away because we're a talking family. So I said, the only thing that came out of my mouth, are you sure? Mm. Do you really think that that's who you are? It was kind of pay painful for me because I wasn't expecting my own seed to go that direction. Yeah. You understand? I understand but I had to ask myself some very <laughs> probing question. Because before that time, I had advocated for the LTB, you know, yeah. I said they have rights too. Now is my daughter. So before you go on, not to interrupt your train of thought, so you just keep that. Yeah. Do you think that you were a little bit nervous or even a lot more scared when she came out to you because of the way you were perceived or the way you were perceived by law? You no, said no, 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 you no, 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 I was just anxious on her behalf. Mm. Mm. Would people understand all of that? Mm. For me, harder, it? it was okay, but it was still not, it wasn't sitting well mm. with me because mm. parents are always guilty mm. of having a certain plan mm. for their children. True. He talks True. about this. <laughs> they understand. Yes. Mm. Yes. They want their children in a certain way. Mm. And that is part of what I was trying to say in the post yeah. for parents only. Mm. Don't set yourself up for big disappointment. Mm. Sure. Don't, don't have a static mindset mm. about how you think your child should mm. be. But your, your conversation now is like you've evolved with your trail of thoughts from when you, you got the first phone call mm -hmm. till now. Mm -hmm. it's, the, it's clear that there's been a lot of growth and you've come to, to more, terms to, with, to yeah. terms oh, with yeah, it. Oh, yeah, 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 um, yeah. But, but, you know, a lot has still happened and unfortunately we don't have your daughter on the table to tell her side of the story. Mm -hmm. But I want to play devil, devil's advocate for her because sure. she's coming from a point of hurt. So mm -hmm. while all of this is going on for you, which is your reality, I think in, in the interaction of that, she has carried her own burdens and mm -hmm. has carried her own hurt, especially from your reactions, especially when, when you were not, when sure you were not even sure. he, where you are, where you are right now. You know, she's mm -hmm. she's been very hurt. Do you think that there is a chance that you have not um, addressed this hurt as seriously as she might be feeling it? Because it sounds very sweet and loving and warm when I the energy I'm getting here, but from her it seems like this baby is like hurt deeply. I just told you what it is. Every child must be allowed. You know, you can only guide a child. You can only advise a child. Must be allowed to walk in their own path and make their own mistakes. Okay? Because who no go, no, no. Until you, yeah, until you walk that path, until you stumble a few times and get up. Then, you know, because I come from a family that really, you know, we have our independence. We, we, you know, I raise global kids. Mm. I know raise village champions. Mm. You understand? So, hey. And we're down with that. All right, all right, all right. So um, let's let's get that over with. I'm glad mm -hmm. you cleared the air on that. But let's talk about your music and your life as a whole. You know, you've been, we've seen a lot of activism from you. We've seen a lot of um, you getting involved with political stuff. I don't want to do a lot of all that politics stuff, but mm -hmm. we'll still be touching on one political mm -hmm. story before mm -hmm. we let you go. But um, let's talk about your music. Um, this is one of my favorite songs from you. And um, the, your album, 1990, is still very, very, very relevant in 2020. How does Released that make on you? 19, in 1989. 89 and 1990. And most of the things you spoke about in that, because I had to go back to listen to that album and listen to some songs. Yeah. And even the main song, 1990, most of the things you said are still applicable in 2020. How does that make you feel? Knowing that you saw all of those things then yes, and you're still saying it, how does it make you feel? And what would you advise our generation to do? How it makes me feel. Uh, 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 I'm sad because those were the same thing Phil I was talking about. People say, oh, he's a prophet. I say, not exactly. Mm. Because those things were happening. They were not happening in this kind of intensity that they're happening, you know, today. 
but they were going on. It was going on. There was no light at that time now. Mm. People were, they were poor Jobless. people at that time now. Okay, the government was showing us that they were not that responsible that mm. time now. So uh, what is the difference? Yeah. It has only intensified. Mm. So it's not like I saw anything, but I was complaining about what was happening at the time. The same thing, mm. and it has not stopped happening. It has just gotten Nigeria. worse. So what no, should we do? No, our what you guys should do? I was, I felt fulfilled. Don't forget that over four decades before a lot of you folks mm. were born, mm. over four decades, I've been doing this. Mm. I saw I've been post. talking about young, exceptional youths of this mm. country. And as far as I'm concerned, I've always maintained that they were the only people that is going to save this country. Mm. The exceptional youths, they are youths, and they are youths. Mm. I'm not talking about all the youths doing stupid negative stuff. Mm. I'm talking about those ones I heard about where look at Lake Ito Gate. Mm. Not those yeah. kind of youths, not them, I know. Now we. Now we. Yeah. <laughs> we follow. Okay. Ah. Yeah. Yes. You know, so, and I know that um, we can't continue like this. So, what I advise young people to do, because I keep saying there is no way people from the 19th century, listen, no, or the 18th century, can defeat people of the 21st century or the 22nd century. You guys are the new generation. So if you can't rescue Nigeria, na Nami go come. I, I saw a post. Jesus is not coming tomorrow. I saw a post where somebody asked you, during the old NSARS mm. movement, somebody asked you that, why are you not out there protesting? And you said, I've been doing this for the past 40 years. I don't tire. Mm. At what point should we say we don't no, tire? No, 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 no. Me, nah, me, I don't know. Nah. 70, <laughs> 70 going to 75. So at that point, maybe Which we you? said, I don't tire. Even not too hey, much. When you reach, you never reach. You're still young. They say madness, yeah. uh, youth. Now you feed madness. Mm. You know, feed the mad when you don't old now. Oh. Now like this Charlie boy, they look before. Exactly, no, I'm, no. I'm getting there. I'm you know, you know. Andrew, John, your androgyny style of dressing has reduced. Could this be age speaking? Of course, it is. If you've been there, done that, seen, you go tired now. You go tired more. But I'm, I'm not tired about gingering young people. Mm. I can't be tired. Mm. I'm not tired about advising them to say, oh, this is how I think you guys should go. Mm. I can't be tired. Okay. But there, there's been okay. things that have stayed constant, right? You've always been opinionated that has kept itself. Even your fashion, even for, for mm. a man in the mm. 70s, I will say you're doing really well, sir. Um, <laughs> and, okay. Um, my kids, my okay. kids. Okay. Really well. <laughs> okay. And obviously now you, now you, the, the, the interests have developed because now you're, you're a lot older and you have a lot more to teach us. And like, there's mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else? I mean, music has also stayed. I know you, you collaborated with Fowl. I saw that as a very intentional thing because Fowl is like the younger version of me. It's like it was, I was like I was watching a, a, a throwback of you or something. So that okay. to me was really especially cool. with a message. Yes, Faust has has embodied everything that you've embodied in terms of speaking out, in terms of like not being afraid to to call Express out the people himself. Mm -hmm. um, in higher power and all of that. Um, so there's music, there's fashion, there's the ginger, there's the area father. Is there anything else that you haven't done yet that you're looking at right now? You're thinking, I want to go into that. Nothing. All right. Is there anything? But, but I just, for me now, you know, uh, I'm this kind of guy. I'm just in my lane. It's just me on that lane. I'm the Michael Jackson of that lane. Mm. I'm not in competition. I'm mm. not distracted with mm. anything. The king. I'm not into awards or no awards. Mm. I just want to be happy here, mm. to have all this positive vibe. And that is why. I'm very fond of young people mm. because they teach me a lot of things about young people. Mm. And because boy is in my name mm. as a youthful young person. Yes, yeah. yeah, that you eh? are. They, they listen, you know. <laughs> so <laughs> it is that boy in me that is connecting mm. with these people. Right. And they are the ones keeping me alive. Mm. End of story. They are the one gingering my swag. They are the one teaching me new things. 
because I'm a very pretty open kind of person. Is there any old thing that you want to keep in this new, that we're, maybe we're losing? Is there my discipline, okay. my consistency, mm -hmm. my tenacity, yes, my tremendous focus, okay. my, yeah, my ability to create. But that comes from young people. Because now they, they teach me forget. <laughs> you know, they keep me calm. It's been so amazing um, chatting yeah. with you, sir. And um, it's, it's a honor as well. Yeah. But uh, finally, let's talk about your music. Finally, before mm -hmm. we let you go, we just saw your recent body of work. And uh, what should we be expecting in 2020 or 2021? And their virtual concerts are the theme right now. Should I don't we be think expecting another song splash? I don't think young people will expect what I'm about to do. Okay. Mm. Because I've worked, I've been working with them. I worked with. Um, you know, what you might call it, um, W4, mm. San Sultan, mm. you know, Orisha Femi, mm. you know, of nice. course, Fowls, mm. you know, and I want to work with as much young people mm. as I possibly can. Can you spell any more new names in case we don't That you would like to work yeah. with if you were you, 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 you uh, I like all of them. <laughs> I like all of them. But you're not doing anything with women. Yeah. Uh, no woman has agreed to do something with me. <laughs> oh, so it's not about you. You've tried it, not just so agreed. I tried at, once, oh, you know, well, but, you know, so it was... Women. Say? Mix, put us in your mix. All right, so um, we're, go <laughs> we're definitely going to close this whole show with another music video. In case you have forgotten what Charlie Boy BD is, we have a mm. throwback video for you from 10 years ago. So you have to stay on till the show ends for you to see that video. But right now, we need to go on a quick break. But before we go on that break, mm -hmm. um, Area Father himself will be signing us out with a freestyle or maybe one of his recent written songs and then we will take it away from there. I should sing something. Something, anything. Chineke, man. Yes, I knew it. I knew you were not going to be a sparing it. <laughs> That's how young, young, young people roll. People. That's how they do. <laughs> yeah. Do you need a beat? But even do the song I want to sing now, you will not understand it. Uh, Just sing it. Don't we'll then, try. We'll we'll try. We'll try. Make an effort. Anwebu, Ndisi chachi na tisye wu Ndi neso ya na toko ya Ndi ekwensu, ndi mwish Hana tango ngwoya Hihihi